Thank you for joining the people of St. Paul's United Methodist Church for these video highlights of our worship service. This week, our worship service reflects on parables of the kingdom of God. My name is Amy Jo Burr. I'm the pastor of St. Paul's. I welcome you to join us in this video, and I invite you to join me now in prayer. New every morning is your love, great God of light, and all day long you are working for good in the world. Stir up in us desire to serve you, to live peacefully with our neighbors, and to devote each day to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Please join me in singing together Hem of Promise. Words will appear on the screen so that you can join in with the singing. A scripture reading from Micah 4, verses 1 through 4. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's temple shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised up above the hills. People shall stream to it, and many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between many peoples and shall arbitrate between strong nations far away. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more but they shall all sit under their own vines and under their own fig trees, and no one shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 31 through 35. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. 
Jesus told the crowds all these things in parables. Without a parable, he told them nothing. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth to speak in parables. I will proclaim what has been hidden since the foundation. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. When we studied together the topics of awe and wonder, one of the things we learned were that stories of moral beauty, music, and art were some of the things that often inspired people to experience those everyday moments of awe and wonder. We also learned what a positive effect experiencing awe and wonder in our daily lives can be for us, how it can open us up for stronger connection with God, with each other, and with all of the natural world which surrounds us. During the next several weeks, several of my sermons will focus on music, art, or moral beauty. And I'm doing this in order to encourage our spiritual growth through some of these experiences of everyday awe and wonder. As part of my own spiritual growth and health in this new year, I've been studying and singing and praying the spirituals. These are one of my favorite genres of religious music and I'm enjoying this particular time of prayer and spiritual growth with God. I thank both our chancel choir and bell choir. They've started preparing some spirituals in their repertoire too. And so in coming weeks, as I share some of those themes, they'll be able to share with you some of the beautiful musical arrangements of the spirituals for singing choir and for bell choir both. Now today, I want to focus on a piece of art from the Networks of Care exhibit at the Minneapolis Institute of Art. Our congregation is going to be receiving a guided tour there on February 8th, and if you wish to come with us, just give the church office a call for a reservation. One of the pieces our guide will comment on is this particular piece that we're looking at today. And I hope you can find in its story some moral beauty regarding the strength of community. For me, this piece reminded me of several of the prophecies and parables regarding the kingdom of God. The painting that we're looking at today is by Eliza Nisenbaum. It shows Nim, Sumia, and Bisharo harvesting flowers and vegetables at the Hope Community Garden. These leaders in the Hope Community Garden are part of two generations of Somali immigrant leaders who are part of the Hope Community. I wanted to share just a bit about the Hope Community. The Hope Community began as a shelter and hospitality house in the Phillips neighborhood of Minneapolis. As decline fell on the neighborhood, some of the residents started to feel unsafe and some of the housing began to look a bit run down. So the residents of Hope Community and others around them put their heads together and thought about what they could do to provide some uplift in their community. One of the first things they began to do was they began purchasing some of that deteriorating housing and undesirable land around them. And with the work of many people from the community, they started rehabbing it, creating affordable housing in their own neighborhood that was in good condition and that looked nice. Gardens popped up too including the one that you see in this painting. The gardens now have about 7,500 square feet of growing space in this neighborhood, and the gardens have three parts. The Hope Block Garden has small plots 
for individuals and families to garden and grow produce for their own use. The Oakland Avenue Garden is a larger garden which is farmed collectively by the people together. And there is also a community teaching garden, teaching all about agriculture at the Rose Housing. Hope Garden now engages people of all ages in food-related activities that promote health, culture, community, and land stewardship. And the community in total now includes affordable housing and agriculture, community businesses, green spaces, and even playgrounds. It's beautiful to see what a community can grow and build together. This reminded me of some of the biblical writings about the kingdom of God. After all, the kingdom of God is what we are hoping, praying, and working for together as people of faith. In the parable, when the yeast rises, the whole loaf rises with it. When we build up the kingdom of God, the whole community is lifted up. Now, it can be real work in mission and ministry. When you're doing things like rehabbing houses, that's not easy. But the results make our hearts glad when we see the way that the whole community is lifted up by our efforts and mission together. When we build up the kingdom of God, food, shelter, and caring often develop together. In the parable that we've just read, the small seed grows into a tree that provides shelter and maybe even berries or fruit for the birds of the air. In the prophecy from Isaiah, instruments of war are no longer needed and they are converted to instruments of agriculture. The resources are used for something that is life-giving. The agricultural images that are often used to describe the kingdom of God, like the ones above, uh, note its generative life-giving aspects. Plants grow, they thrive, and sometimes they even feed the community. Plants also grow and spread, seeding new plants, and yeast makes the whole loaf rise and grow. The kingdom of God can't really be contained. The kingdom of God grows and spreads as a network of care that sustains and strengthens us all. Be encouraged as we act in small ways to encourage growth in the kingdom of God, our efforts in mission will grow, spread, and be like a small seed or tiny piece of yeast grown large. May our hopes, prayers, and our everyday practical actions all build up God's kingdom of justice and peace. Amen.